I just do an intro? I just did an intro. <laughs> We all had those old projects where you know we let them sit on the shelf for a while and we finally decide to get back into it and it takes us two hours to find the tripod, some of the cables for the radio, and a missing element. Thank you Adam for hooking me up to get that up and going again. But I am going to be getting back into satellites. Let's talk about that. Let's just have a whole review on whole satellites and satellite operations. So some of the principles, some of the things that we're going to need. It just, it's been a while since we talked about that. The number one thing is you need a good Yagi antenna. This is the Aero 2 Yagi antenna. Um, it has a two meter three element and this is a seven element 70 centimeter or 440 uh, megahertz. This antenna has a built in diplexer that is able for me to transmit and receive on both of these antennas or one or the other at the same time and that is going to be very important pause for airplane here as I was saying here um, it's going to be very important for you to be able to do that also it's important to have a full duplex radio and that is a radio that's going to be able to receive and you can hear the receiving station as you are transmitting on the other side of the radio so that means on side a we got to tune it to on this test coming up here in a minute, the National Weather Service, because they're transmitting all the time. I tried to wrangle someone up on the local repeater and apparently he's already in Galveston. Um, lucky guy. The National Weather Service um, is always transmitting and there'll be a great station that you can tune into, then tune to the other side, a local repeater, and see if you can hit that repeater and continuously hear the National Weather Service transmitting. A full duplex radio is important because in satellite operations, it's not always guaranteed you're making it to the repeater, or in our case, the satellite. So that means when we are transmitting, we also want to be simultaneously listening for that to come back to us so that we know we're making it in there. So it's a positive reinforcement to us so that we can know that we're hitting the satellite and that signal's coming through clearly. Also, in good amateur radio practice, listen first. Don't just point the antenna at the sky and hope that you hit something because I'm going to guarantee you, you're not. It's going to take a little bit and uh, a couple of tries to hear the satellite come over, get used to tracking the satellite as it tracks across the sky and transmitting and holding the antenna at the right angle and messing with polarization. That's all going to come in later. So in order to know that you're making it into the repeater or in our case satellite, you're going to want a full duplex radio so that you can hear yourself coming back to you. But when you hear yourself, that means the satellite is able to pick up your signal and retransmit it back on the downlink. Very important. Another key aspect of satellites is a Doppler shifting. I said on a video a while ago, and I rewatched that to get some of the principles right. I, I know them, but I needed like this, this refinement. Um, link in the description below is probably popping up over here somewhere too. The example I used in that video is a train coming at you as a great example is a Doppler effect. The train comes in closer and closer to you. It's getting louder and louder and louder, but as it passes you, it gets quieter super, super, super fast. And that is the sound waves are stacking on top of each other as the train's coming at you and it seems like it's getting, but it's actually truly getting louder. But the results of the stacking waves, the pitch of that uh, signal or frequency or sound is getting louder. And as it passes you, now the train's getting farther away from you and that's stretching the sound wave out and it's making it seem like it's getting quieter much, much faster. Same thing's happening on a satellite. The satellite's moving thousands of miles an hour. It's just zooming across the sky and that's why it only takes about 10 to 15 minutes for it to crest horizon to horizon. And in order to combat the Doppler effects, we're going to have to continuously change the frequencies of both the uplink and the downlink. 
in my experience, I forgot which side is more important to do that. One of the two meters or the centimeter centimeters frequencies, um, the shift is really, really minute. And if you kind of just hit it right in the middle at the um, advertised frequency for that, you shouldn't really need to shift that much. I forgot which one it is, two meters or 70 centimeters. Someone's commenting and telling me. But on the other side, uh, we will be continuously shifting. I think I said five kilohertz as the, the satellite's passing. The shifting on which way you shift is also very important. So if the satellite's coming at you, that means you're going to need to be set higher to their advertised frequency. And as it's coming at you, you need to start shifting lower and lower. And when it's right overhead, you need to be right on their advertised frequency. And then as it's moving past you, you're going to start going lower than their advertised frequency. Um, I said in the video every like five minutes change um, down five kilohertz and that's still correct for the satellite passes. In order to get ready for some satellite passes, you're going to need a couple of apps on your phone that will tell you where the satellites are in relative to how they're passing over you and also what times they're going to be passing and the frequencies that they are transmitting and receiving on. Um, two great apps, Look for Sat and Heavens Above, I still recommend those. Or, I need to go get it. I, I thought I had this out here and I forgot to grab it under the hours it took me to find the tripod and all the cables and everything else. Uh, let me go ahead and get the other extra piece of equipment. If you have one of these, it's going to be very useful. If you're lucky enough to have an R Finder, Bob has been working very hard to update his app with a lot of information from the satellite databases and the internet to show you that same information I talked about with Look for Sats and um, Heavens Above. But the R Finder is going to do an extra step later with the Azel uh, rotary antenna base that is going to be pretty cool. I can't wait to get my hands on it. But that's going to be an automatic rotator that's going to track this satellite for you and do all the shifting so you'll always be right on frequency. I can't wait to play with that. Bob, get me a device so I can demo. I know it's right up there, but Jason hasn't given it to me yet. But I'm looking forward to playing with that. The R Finder does a lot of that for you and it's already built in to the R Finder's app and settings. In classic Frank form, I forgot to charge this last night. And I knew I was going to come out here today. And I was like, that, it should still have power. I turned it off right, but um, I left it on like any of my other HTs. But the R Finder should be overlaid on the screen when I was talking about it earlier. Has all those settings so built into it. And you don't need to go and get another app. It's already there, just like how you can look up other repeaters in your area and it does all the localized programming for you. It does the same thing for satellites. That's a pretty cool feature on the R Finder. Great HT and it runs Android. Pretty cool. This is my plan for coming up and I'm going to get active in satellites again. I'm going to test this TYT here in a second. This is a TYT 9800 for full duplexing. I already have the Aero 2 antenna up and going with the replacement element. Thank you, Adam. I am going to be looking for a harness like Robert has for his mobile radio. The mobile radios, uh, you get a little bit more power out of them. Um, I'm still only going to be transmitting 10 watts out of it, but it has a large larger display and it's easier to program and I am going to be programming the radio with all the different uh, satellite frequencies so I'm not going to have to keep manually tuning this over and over again. I showed you earlier in my videos the, how to set the radio for steps so you hit the right frequency and you tune it up and down but um, when playing with other people's satellite rigs that were already pre-programmed with those steps it was pretty nice. Uh, one display I saw it had um, the, the zero on it and then it in the side of the display it had plus or minus five so it had the satellite name dash zero for it to be right on frequency and if you want to go above it you go up and it said dash five dash ten dash fifteen so you knew automatically where you are with respect to where that main frequency is I like that idea and I'm gonna steal it okay I'm not gonna steal it best form of flattery is copying so 
I am flattering you, Robert. That is a great idea and I'm going to be taking it. So right now for our demonstration purpose, I have the Alinko power supply running my TYT 9800. The face place is currently detached for upstairs in my base station. It's still gonna be my base station radio, but till I get that going, it's gonna be my satellite radio. And the antenna. So let's go ahead and turn it up here. Now we hear the National Weather Service going on side B. I have side A turned to a local repeater here, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn the main side over to side A. So side A is now my transmit frequency, and we'll go ahead and see if we can hit the repeater and get someone to come back to us while we hear that National Weather Service going. This is Kilo Golf 5 Alpha Hotel Juliet uh, transmitting and testing a full duplex 90 TYT 9800 radio. This is Kilo Golf 5 Alpha Hotel Juliet radio test. One, two, three. We just heard the repeater courtesy tone come back, it crashed, and the National Weather Service has not stopped. And that's what we're looking for. The one drawback on this particular radio is as you change frequencies, the receive side drops out for a second. So let's hear that. In the you hear that pop, pop. Something I'm going to have to deal with. Men, when I get another full duplex radio, that probably won't happen, but that's what happens on this particular radio. So I'm looking forward to doing satellites again on my own. Um, I made a couple of contacts in the past with other people's rigs, and that was great. But I want to do it with my own rig. Um, I can't wait to do this on my own rig. And um, it would be a completion of a project I started, almost my original project for this channel. So this is my video going out there and showing my renewed interest in this. This is the video I, I'm putting out here to say, hey, I'm going to be doing this again and I can't wait to hear you on the air and on a satellite. Till next time, everybody, go forth and conquer.